1. Hello, party people. Hope you made it all through your Mother's Day without too much drama. My story is about this past Friday night. Thank God it didn't happen on Sunday or I might have completely lost it. Anyways, this was by far the most ridiculous encounter I have ever lived through as a server. I hope you guys deem it worthy. I work for a busy Italian casual dining, family-owned restaurant in my city. I have worked at almost 10 different restaurants over the past 15 years. And I gotta say, this is by far my favorite. I'm friends with the manager in this story, CM, and while I definitely got burned, I feel really bad for what she had to endure. A little background first. It was about 7.30pm on Friday night when a party of 11 walks in. Of course, they didn't make a reservation. It wasn't a slow night by any means, but it had started to slow down at that point, so they miraculously didn't have to wait that long for their table. We had to push three four-top tables together using two tables from two other server stations. I was the most seasoned server out of the three of us, so CM told me that I would be taking it. I told the other two servers they could have one table each out of the rest of my section, so they wouldn't get screwed over either. One of them took me up on the offer. The other is relatively new and decided to just keep his smaller section. When the tables sat down, I had a full section. Three other tables, so I was pretty busy. The party sits down and is missing three people from their party. No big deal. I get drink orders and ask if they want appetizers. The guy at the head of the table pulls me to the side and says that he's going to be a pain in the ass, but he wants a pitcher of water for himself and a large roni pizza cut into 16 pieces. We usually cut pies into 8 slices, so this isn't a huge ask or anything, but I'm starting to get a feel for how these people are going to be. He also puts in an order for our fried calamari. Well done. No banana peppers, no problem. I put in the order and get their drinks. By the time I get back to the table with their drinks, the rest of their party has shown up. It's a woman with two small children, both looking to be under five. As I'm trying to get a drink order from her, their kids are screaming in my face. The mother does absolutely nothing to quiet them down. Now, normally I love kids. Parents love me because I actually interact with their children. I go out of my way to give them special things. I just love making kids happy. But these two demon children weren't letting me even speak to them. So from that point on, I decided I would just ignore them. Their mother didn't seem to care either way, and I didn't really have the time to be doting on a couple of brats anyways. By this time, the table is ready to order their meals. They only ended up ordering six entrees, but with the pizza and the calamari, it didn't seem that weird to me. I put their food in and bring out the pizza and calamari. They order some bar drinks at this point. Of course, they were all frozen drinks that take a while to make. So I put those into the computer and tend to my other tables. I drop off the drinks about five minutes later, and one of the women literally pulls on my shirt and says, These calamari are rubbery and cold. Get us a new one. I apologize and take the plate from the table and go inform CM of the problem. She says no big deal. Gets a new one fired up and says she will bring it out to the table. At this point, their entrees are coming up. So I run the rest of their food to the table and explain the calamari would be out shortly. I was starting to suspect that something was off about them because I delivered the calamari myself. It looked fantastic and had literally just come out of the fryer As I'm delivering the food, I glance over at the children because they were still screeching at the top of their lungs and lo and behold, the kids are throwing pieces of bread at my other table. The mother's still not giving two fucks. After I drop off the food, I head to my other table and profusely apologize. They were regulars, and although they were not happy that their dinner was being interrupted by these awful kids, they sympathized with me, and they could see this table had me running around ragged. After the table had left, they admitted it was actually kind of entertaining to watch, and they actually left me a 150% tip. But back to the table from hell. My manager drops off the calamari, and instantly the table erupts into a tirade of complaints, about every single entree. My manager offered to remake them for her, but they declined. She offered to take them something else. They declined. At this point, they had eaten more than half of each plate, so she told them she would comp three of the dishes. So, half of what they ordered. But since they refused to take anything else, and she hadn't had a problem with eating that much food, she was unable to comp the rest of them. 
She told them that she was risking her job just doing that. As she had told me before she took the calamari out, she recognized the guy at the head of the table because he pulls shit like this all the time. They argued for a good ten minutes in the middle of the restaurant. Literally all the adults of this party were yelling at my poor manager, while these two children just screamed. My manager was sweating and I could tell was very uncomfortable. She just said I'm sorry and went back into the office where she erupted into tears. I felt so bad. This was my table, but these people knew what they were doing. They knew my manager would bring out the appetizer and they just cornered her. At this point, she just tells me that she's not going to comp any more food and that if they say something when I drop the check to get her. I go back to the table and ask if anyone wants dessert or more drinks. They all look defeated, to be honest, and just quietly said no. I bring over the check and walk away. About two minutes later, I see them all arguing and one of them signals for me. She said that my manager was supposed to take off a fourth dish. I said that I would get my manager and go back to get her. She then grabs the kitchen manager, he's a big dude, and goes out to talk to the table. You have all gathered by the door at this point. I had the hostesses keep an eye on them because I was afraid they would leave without paying. They argue with my manager for another 10 minutes. My manager wound up giving them the owner's email address and told them that they could take it up with him. Then one of the women says that they aren't paying for that last dish and that she was calling the police. The woman hands me a bunch of cash and I count it in front of her. They paid the exact total of the check, leaving me 11 cents. They left and I went into the back stunned. I said something to a co-worker and she was like, you should go say something to them. Now I am probably the least confrontational person alive and working as a server for 15 years, it's a cardinal sin to ever bring up the amount of gratuity a table leaves you. But these people made my friend cry. So I say, you know what? I'm going to. I walked out the back door and chased them down the parking lot. I have no idea where this came from, but I confronted these awful people and asked if their service was bad. The one spokesman of the group said no, I was great. But my awful bitch manager should have taken that last dish off the check and I would have gotten my tip. I said that isn't how this works and this is my livelihood. I didn't expect them to pony up any cash, but it was definitely satisfying to at least call them out for it. Anyway, they left and a cop showed up. We explained the situation and he laughed, and said if they ever come back and gave us a problem to give him a call and left his cell number. I'm just waiting for a one-star Yelp review. But I guess the owner has said that if we recognize anyone from that party in the restaurant again, to let a manager know when they will be escorted out. Fuck scammers, fucking trash ass people like this, I have no idea why a free meal is worth so much trouble. But I'm so glad my restaurant won't be allowing these specific ones back. 2. A bit of backstory. I'm working at an international hotel chain in the restaurant for about two years now. I have never had stable shifts, they keep changing me from breakfast to lunch to dinner constantly as they use me as an extra. I have worked so many triple and double shifts and I have lost count, but that is how I managed to get by financially. Yesterday there was a woman in her 50s who came to eat breakfast. Unfortunately, the coffee machine in the restaurant is out of order, so we have no espressos, cappuccinos, or anything like that. Only filter black coffee in 20 liter containers. The moment she sees me and goes, Good morning, where can I find cappuccino? I explained to her that her coffee machine is out of order and that we don't have another like this one, which makes cappuccino in the hotel. But because I was not 100% sure, I would check various coffee stations we have to make sure. So in the middle of my shift, I start running around and checking the coffee machines. And of course, there was no cappuccino or espresso as a choice. I go back and tell her that I checked the other machines and there was no option for other coffees. She looks at me and says sarcastically, International Hotel Hell. At that moment, I think that okay, I need to make sure she has a good time despite the coffee incident. So I tell her I'm really sorry about this. If there's anything I can do to help you or make your stay with us more enjoyable, just tell me and I will personally look into it. At that moment, I realize that she has been living in hotels for years because she goes like, It's not your fault. You have not done anything wrong. If anything, you did your best to try to please my needs. It is the higher management, not even the middle management who is to blame. 
They don't come down here to check what is going on, how the food is, how the plants in the restaurant are. Most of the plants are half green and half yellow. They don't care or they don't want to know what they're doing. We've had a new GM for the past one and a half years who has no idea how restaurants work. I have stayed in four other international hotel hells and this one here is the worst. As she is saying all these things I am left speechless, not because the guest is always right, but because she actually was right about every single thing that she said. She told me in my face what a bunch of my co-workers have been thinking and witnessing every day for months now. Eventually she tells me, You have a good attitude. Get out of here. Start working somewhere else. Try to do some tour guiding. Why are you even working here? My reply was I can't find another job and also I feel a certain loyalty towards my employer and workplace. And she asks a question that is one of the reasons I am posting this story. She goes, are you sure they will be loyal to you too? Speechless me, I just smile and tell her. That is something I cannot answer. All I can say is that I am sorry that your stay with us has been a disaster. She also hated the food because cold bacon, cold fried eggs, just like every day. And I thank you for the talk, and if there is still anything I can do to help you, I will be right here. And she just left after a warm thank you. I feel that it is vital to this story to say that I absolutely hate being a waiter. Always have and always will. I know how to be a good waiter and I'm certainly one of the best in that hotel as noted by my supervisors and F&B manager, but I hate it. So after that lovely talk with that guest I started to think about things a bit more. Today I walked to one of my friends who is also a tour guide so that he will train me and that I can start doing that. Tomorrow is my first day as a trainee. If it goes well I might get the job. So, that wonderful guess might have changed my life. 3. Was working breakfast shift the other day when an older couple sits down to order. They both order blueberry pancakes. Important to note. Our blueberry pancakes have the blueberries cooked into them. But we also have regular buttermilk pancakes that you can order with apple, peach or blackberry topping. I bring them their drinks. And after a few minutes their food comes out. I set the plates down and the man says, You brought the wrong food. To which his wife adds, This is not what we ordered. We order at this place at home all the time. And this is the wrong order. You ordered the blueberry pancakes, didn't you? Go get me a menu. I sigh and do an about face, grab a menu, fold to the page containing what they ordered, and marched back to hand her the menu with my face portraying the cold irritation I'm constantly suppressing at work. It's supposed to be the plain pancakes with the blueberry compote on top. Not cooked into the pancakes. That's how blueberry pancakes are served. Did you mean? We order this all the time. It's supposed to have the blueberry compote on top. We do not have a blueberry compote. The woman looks up, as I assume she finishes reading with a wait-a-second look on her face. I believe you meant to order the blackberry pancakes. The man looks at his wife with this, oh shit, we're idiots expression, realizing they've made a pair of jackasses of themselves to several complete strangers, not just myself, but to my colleagues and the guests at nearby tables watching them gobble on. Oh, I think you're right. I usually am. I'll go tell him to prepare some blackberry topping. I turn again as he tries to stammer out an apology and tell the expediter to call for two sides of blackberry topping, because they ordered the wrong things. This short, sweet-looking middle-aged woman says words I've been thinking all day, and these assholes want to make it your problem because they're too fucking stupid to read. I love you so much, you mean old bitch. I run out another table's food, stopping to tell the boomers that the topping is working. I walk off to deliver the food as the man attempts to stammer out an apology again. I just turn, flash a thumbs up at him because I'm honestly not that upset. Sure, you killed the good mood I walked in with, but A, a good mood never lasts long in food service, B, that's nowhere near the meanest thing that's been said to me at work, and C, it's nowhere near the dumbest reason I've been fussed at work. I get around to bringing out the blackberry topping. Sorry about that. We'll uh, do better next time. Really sorry, you'll understand when you're our age. Oh, get off the fucking cross, lady. We need the wood. 
They eat and eventually get up to leave. The man hands me some cash and apologizes again as he walks past with his head sort of hanging. About a 50% tip. Eh, I'll take it. I got thick skin and I can't fill my gas tank with a good mood. I'm glad they didn't double down on being idiots like most do, but maybe just order right to begin with next time. 4. I work in a huge restaurant in Austria that runs a bit differently than normal restaurants do. How it works. The restaurant is located off of the highway, which means everyone and their grandma comes to eat there. Basically, every station has two designated servers, one that does the drinks and dessert, and the other who does the main course. There are also additional cashiers for the entire restaurant. Instead of putting down tickets, we take the orders separately. Every drink prepared by the bar has its own glass, so the cashier knows what to charge by the glass sitting on the table. Every main dish we put down and order in the kitchen manually, so we have to keep up with the orders that way. Our restaurant has all the dishes in a standard menu with soup, salad, and dessert included. Background. When I first started working there almost three years ago during the summer season, only part-time at first, there was more than enough staff to go around. Because the place is somewhat out of my way, 45 minutes from home, almost two and a half hours from school, and I needed to focus on uni, I didn't return until a year later. Some things happened in the meantime which I won't go into detail about, but it's safe to say we're very bad for the company. They did some budget cuts in the wrong places and stopped hiring as many part-timers during the season. This, coupled with what happened, meant no one else really wanted to apply for the job position. This, of course, meant everyone who stayed had to work their asses off because of the lack of extra staff. For scale with other places, on a regular busy Sunday, the restaurant makes around 80 to 100,000 profit. The record being just shy of 200,000. Sundays and holidays are, unsurprisingly, the fullest. Due to staff shortage, counting the bar, server, and cashier employees, there are about 40 of us working there in total. Always the same people every weekend, with not even a chance of anyone getting a vacation leave. It's also important to note the company's actual profit throughout these budget cuts hasn't dropped almost at all. This story. I was working a morning shift for the fourth day in a row, which usually isn't a big deal, but was particularly busy this week since it was a holiday, followed by an extended weekend for most of the customers. I'm still only a part-timer, but I had the time to work extra in between the school break. This meant I spent 45 minutes driving, an average of 9 hours a day working through without a break, and driving back afterwards another 45 minutes. I'm usually super chill and very friendly with the customers, since this job is actually something I take very seriously and enjoy immensely. This, though, was the last shift I worked that week. And it was on a Sunday. I had been stressed because of school and other personal reasons, which made me get little to no sleep Saturday night. The morning shift that day was already unusually busy, which left me a little irritated. Since there was only two of us working in service for the whole restaurant, by the time lunch rolled around, it got busier and busier, so I couldn't take a break. Still, being used to it, I didn't think it'd be a big deal. The lunch run itself wasn't too bad, although fairly busy. But at this point, I've seen so much worse like you couldn't imagine. There were five stations in the back, each of them a team of two people, nine tables per station. It had begun calming down. And at this point, my manager decided he'd send one of the teams on break, and make it four stations with 12 tables, as opposed to the previous arrangement. As soon as I started working on the newly assigned station, there it was, the Hell Bus. And my tables, all empty, naked, and alone. I knew I was fucked. I'm a champ, though, so I went around and did my best. My drink waitress took their orders while I took to taking soup orders one by one, and the main course orders in the same order after that. I was doing this very intricate thing where I served the table that sat down first, before the table that sat down second, third, fourth, etc. To that day, I didn't know that was so fucking unreasonable. The hell bus did not make it easy for me, however. Oh, no, no, no. That would be ridiculous. I had to politely explain to each table separately how our menu worked, which, in the end, took like five minutes of my time, and uh, that's whatever. But not for table number seven. Oh no, table number seven sat down last, but they needed their food now, goddammit. Where was their server? Hello? 
Now, you all need to know this about me. I am a complete and utter baby. Our entire restaurant policy is the customer is always right, which is shocking, I know. But I'm a people pleaser and want to make sure everyone is taken care of. Table number seven sat down last. It was an elderly man who, seeing me walk by to get soup for table number six, shouted at me that they've been waiting for 15 minutes. It was outrageous how slow the service here was. And where was their goddamn server? At that point, I did something I have never thought myself even possible of doing. I turned around, looked the man straight in the eye, and with a completely chill voice said, Sir, I know when you sat down, you have been waiting for five minutes. Max ten, if I'm being generous. And then my colleague who was doing the drinks for our station shows up with a full tray of drinks behind me and goes, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm inclined to agree with my co-worker here. You haven't been here that long. That's not even the best part, though. The entitled man went red in the face, opened his mouth to object, but his own son beat him to it. It's all right, Dad, sit down. He then turned to us and said, It's okay, don't mind him. Please continue doing what you are doing. We have all the time in the world to wait. The entitled man didn't dare say anything to me after that. 5. Is there a term for a male Karen? Because this was a Karen power couple. I work as a bartender at a small restaurant. I was at work last night and I'm working decently quick on account of it being Saturday. I am presently making a series of long islands when I hear somebody on the other end of the restaurant demand to speak to a manager and... Maybe they can get us some actual service! For the purposes of the restaurant this week, I am the manager. I regretfully set down four to six long islands, leaving two unhappy regulars. I walk over and introduce myself to an older couple in their sixties, sitting there angrily eyeing me and a young waitress. This gal had previously been knocked over by a drunk. Yeah, she's having a bad week. This stupid girl just brought me a flat beer. I look, the beer in question is not flat. It has less head than is ideal, but it is not flat. Still, I don't argue with him. Sir, that's not her fault. I try. His wife cuts me off. Yes, it is. Anybody with eyes can see the beer is flat. If it's flat, she shouldn't have brought it. Again, beer, not flat. I try a different tactic. I am the bartender here, ma'am. If you blame anybody, blame me. Her husband gives me a smarmy, condescending, without a word kind of look. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Why'd you pour me a flat beer? I finally get to explain. I'm sorry, sir, our tap was damaged earlier this week. I can get you a different beer, but Mac... He looks offended. And his wife cuts him off to yell at me. What? You haven't fixed it? What kind of restaurant is this? I try to explain the manager is in her 70s and homesick. But the server makes a mistake of trying to take back the beer the old man didn't want. The Karen slaps her hand and her husband glares at the young woman. I didn't say you could take that back. Go play on your phone. I glare at these two. Realize they haven't gotten any food yet, just a beer they didn't want, and realize how much easier it'll be to do the only appropriate thing. Ma'am, you can't be striking servers. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. She stares at me slack-jawed like she's shocked she's being kicked out for a literal slap on the wrist. Well, hand, but still. It was just a tap, she insists, her husband hating at me with his hating eyes. No, I'm not moving. Get me your manager. I try again to tell him the manager is sick, so I am acting manager. He cuts me off. Get her on the phone, then. I'm not leaving until... The police arrive? Because if I'm calling anybody, it'll be them. Don't worry, though. It's a misdemeanor. He leaves immediately. I return to find a line of impatient but understanding customers. I start by finishing the last two Long Islands. Hey, everybody. Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 46. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. <sighs> I had a busy day today. Uh, well, 
Busy day Thursday, we're kind of technically into Friday at this point. Uh, a lot to do. Trip down to the hospital to pick up the new treatment for my, for my psoriasis. That was quick, though. A uh, bit of shopping on the way home. Then uh, to go vote in the uh, European Parliament elections. Get some gas and electricity so that, you know, that the house keeps running. Uh, to have a trip round to my sister's for something. And then work. It's a busy day indeed. Well, I intend to enjoy my weekend. Uh, with any luck. I don't want to jinx it, but I'll do my best. And uh, I expect I'll probably stream at some point. I don't know exactly what time, but I'll, I'll try and schedule it for a couple hours before I actually do it. Uh, just so people have a little bit of warning. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.